Looks like a good fishing spot down there by the picnic table below the spillway here. That's where I'd be fishing if I had a South Carolina license, which I don't, so I won't. This is our famous Jill walking across the dam shot. And this is my famous taking pictures of Jill taking pictures shot. Hi, I'm Jill. And I'm John. And we're the geezers on the go. Go, go, go. In this episode, we're at Little Petey State Park on Lake Norton in South Carolina. It has 50 sites, 32 with water and electric, and one cabin. It's in the town of Dillon, a stone's throw from the North Carolina border, and just off Interstate 95. Little Petey is named after the river that flows into Lake Norton, where there's a boat launch and a fishing pier. Lake Norton is 54 acres, just the right size for canoes and kayaks. We'll give you the tour. There are also some easy trails for a lazy day's walk in the woods. And if you've never been there before, the famous South of the Border tourist trap is only 15 miles away. Watch for the signs, they're everywhere. We're here at Little Petey State Park near Dillon, South Carolina. We're in site number 22. And they're not bad sites here, um, mostly sandy, so make sure you bring your broom. The site, about half the sites have water and electric. The rest are just, um, I guess you call primitive, no hookups or anything. Sites seem to be pretty good size. Ours is pretty, I guess, I don't know, spacious, but a lot of space around it. And we're right down within walking distance of the little lake here. Called Lake Norton. I think it's about 50 acres. I don't think they allow any electric mo uh, any um, gas motors, but I've seen a few electric motors out there. And I think they rent kayaks. But it's a good, good space. And we've been here before. This time we just caught, sort of a stop off for a couple days. The sites here are, like I said, mostly sandy, and. These, the ones next to us, 23, 24, 25, 26, are right along the lake. And just about all the sites are back in. There might be one or two pull-throughs, but not many. And as you can see, they're right by the lake. And there's right here in the middle at this end. This is, this is probably the far end of the campground loop. There is a communal space there. There's uh, some cornhole, there's some uh, horseshoes, and then the bathroom is right there, so it's easy. And they also have a little seating area where there's a big fire pit, so you could have a bunch of people have a really big bonfire over there. I would say probably 25 and 26 over here are two of the better sites right by the water. I'm not quite sure if you could get in to go swimming or if you'd want to, but it'd be easy to bring in your kayak or a canoe and bring it right up to your campsite. 29 and 30 are probably the, are two pull-throughs over here. They're not too far from the lake. I mean, the lake's right behind me, so and they're pretty big and those two both have water and electric also but once you start getting farther up here past 30 they turn into almost all primitive sites with no uh, no electric or power probably past number 32 looks like the last one on this side that has water and electric 
if you did want most of these back row ones in the 30s up until the end of this loop they're very very wooded and they'll give you pretty good space outside some up there's the near, on both sides there are some water spigots around the park that one happens to be a water spigot almost in right within that guy's campsite but you would fill up over up at the dump station has a, a water if you needed to fill a bigger tank to, but there are ones, there's another one scattered throughout the primitive area. And behind here at certain spots, there are some trails. So there are, for hikers and things, it'd be a nice trail system here too. At this primitive end, uh, you can see there are some tents here. There is another bathhouse down at this end. And although it's a little older, they look like they're doing some renovations. They put in, it looks like a new heating system. So if you come in the winter, you won't freeze your uh, uh, butt off <laughs> taking a shower. I'm not really sure why it's numbered this way, but as you come around towards the end of this loop by 40, where there's a primitive site, you come over here to site 15. If you can get this site, this is <laughs> one of the biggest sites I've ever seen. Uh, you come in, this is it, this is how big it is. Keep walking, keep walking, keep walking, and it's have a picnic table, fire ring, your water and electric is over here. I think at one time that fence wasn't here from the last time, which kind of keeps you from going through there. Maybe it was one time one big, like a communal loop, like a buddy size, but you have to come around here this is still part of the site. You could fit like four trailers in here. So if you wanted to have lots of space <laughs> and bring your boats and bring your kayaks and bring two extra cars with you, 15 would be your space. And then it comes right out to number 41 and there's hardly any space. So you go from you got this little teeny space to this humongous space right there. Some of these sites, like I said, they're a little bit funny uh, marked because as you come in, you usually start at one and two or whatever, and these you start with the last two sites, 49 and 50. I guess these were a last minute addition to the park. They had some space. Decided, okay, let's put in a couple more sites. Good for them. There's one other little extra loop that goes a little closer to the lake again, and that's site 6 through 13. And come around here, you have some sites that are in the middle, but there's a couple sites down at the end that are real pretty. We'll show you. Since our trip here was like a last minute I did get a decent site in our site number 22 we were there once before four but if I given more time I would try to see if I could get into seven and eight or nine around the corner because they're right on the water and especially number eight's got lots of space and you see that one have lots of space there go around there's this one over here, number nine, which is also nice. But we're not too bad. We're just up there a little bit on the other part of the back side of this loop. So for most of the sites on this side of the loop, you can see the lake. Number 10 here is also pretty close to the lake. And as you come around here, number 11 is a pretty good size one that's a I guess you'd consider it a pull-through because you come in there, although the you'd have to go all the way around and almost turn your rig because the water and electric are actually right there. But it'd be nice to you had a good view of the lake. The park has one cabin, which is very nice. It sits right out looking at the lake. Looks like it has a big grill and a, a hammock. We'll maybe take a walk around the back, see what it looks like. 
That's what the cabin looks like in the back. It has some well, a chair and a couple other seats out here. Picnic table, a nice fire ring, more chairs. And then you can walk right down there. There's a trail that goes along the lake right there. So pretty, pre pretty, pretty. Right near the boat launch area, there's a nice day use area with some uh, swings and uh, slides and picnic tables. And right here in the middle, there's a piece which says it's petrified wood. It says it's more than 10,000 years old. When we came here about two years ago, this road was just awful. It was full of potholes and you had to go so slow so you wouldn't jar your back teeth out. And they were just starting to repave it. And I'm happy to say now it's... Ooh, it's nice and smooth, all paved, so you don't have to worry about your teeth falling out anymore. We kind of like Little Petey State Park. It's uh, near Dillon, uh, South Carolina, toward the northern end of the state, almost by North Carolina. And we had been there once before, and this was like a quick stop off for us. Yeah, and it was a little bit of a difference coming in there this time, right? Yeah, well, last time we came in there, the road in is about at least a mile from the road. And it, it was just, horrible. It was terrible. It was like bumps, holes, have big potholes, and but now it's paved. Paved, so it's it's nice. And I would say that campground, I liked it because it's I consider it peaceful. It was very pe peaceful. Yeah. Peaceful. Uh, yeah, I would go along with that. It has the sites are very sandy, so bring your broom. Um, and maybe only about less than half of the sites have a water and electric. The rest are just uh, they do have water on a lot of the sites. But um, good size, and there's a little lake there called Lake Norton, which is about, what, I think 50 acres? Yeah, 50 acres, and it's just a gorgeous little lake. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess that uh, lends to its peacefulness. <laughs> Maybe. There are no houses around yeah. uh, Lake Norton. I, I didn't see, I saw one building on the other side, and I don't know what it was. If it was a private home or a garage or a... And I think on that lake, too, looked like... I didn't see anybody with gas motors. I think you could only have electric motors and a lot of people like kayak or canoes. And I think it, I don't know if all the time you have to find somebody who works there because you know, didn't see anybody in the office. Um, they do rent kayaks and some canoes yeah. and, and boats. And, and, and we also got to walk a couple of neat little trails. Right, there's a couple of them right along the lake. And there's a cool little, uh, there's actually a little dam there so you can walk across the dam and a big uh, like berm that goes on to, on to one side of the lake. We're used to seeing waterfowl at these lakeside campgrounds, but Little Petey was the first time we ever saw pet ducks at someone's campsite. Just goes to show, you never know what you'll see when you're camping. Lake Norton definitely is the star of Little Petey, offering bass and catfish for the anglers, and boat and kayak rentals if you just want to enjoy the lake. They do have a small boat launch here at Little Petey. Very pretty little lake. It's a gravel launch, but it's in pretty good shape, so you could launch. Because I don't think you're uh, allowed uh, gas motors on this lake. I think it's uh, electric motors only. Uh, most people that I've seen on the lake so far have been just kayaks and canoes. They do have kayaks, canoes, and some rowboats available for rental here. They also have a nice little fishing pier. And I think you can see a boat out there right now. Guy fishing. This is the dam at Little Petey. You can see there are a couple people out there fishing. And they have a little walking bridge over the spillway here. It's just an open spillway. Let the Little Petey flow in and flow out. Called a, this is a blackwater lake formed by a blackwater river, a little island out there, 
And that is the entirety of the lake. I was uh, looking one, having a couple of these little plaques here telling you about the park, and it says that this park was developed in uh, 1951. It opened, and it was because of a bunch of landowners donated their properties, and that and the state got together and built this nice park. And this is Lake Norton, which was named after the first superintendent of Lake of a little Petey State Park. And he served for, for over 20 years, 1951 to 1973. Right between the one little cabin here and site number three, there's a little trail and a nice walk that takes you right along the lake. It's not too difficult. It's not too very far from our campsite. It's an easy walk over here so you're not getting yourself worn out before you get there. It looks like we had some big rain the other day and you can tell the sandy walkway here had a big stream running through it. So let's go down here and see where we go. You come out here and this little walkway goes right along the lake and, and you end up down at the end where the little boat launches and the, and the fishing pier. That's a pretty setting. Come sit here on the bench and get a nice view of the lake and the dam and the whole kitten caboodle. And the little walkway here is all sand and it's packed pretty good so you're not going to sink in anywhere even with all the rain they had here recently, but it's an easy little walk if you wanted to walk all the way down to the day use area and the boats and where you could just sit and stand and contemplate. Just past site number 40 is what I was talking about. There's one of the trails that go back around the park. This one's called Beaver Pond Nature Trail and it goes back into the woods back there. And it's, it's an easy walking distance of just about any of the campsites here. If you've never been to south of the border or haven't been in a while, it's only 15 miles from Little Petey, just across the North Carolina border off Interstate 95. It's got its own RV park, lots of tacky souvenir shops and bizarre attractions, and it's an honest-to-goodness 1950s roadside attraction. That little trip down memory lane pretty much marked the end of our visit to Little Petey. Hope you enjoyed it, and as always, we'll see you down the road. Stop, stop, stop!